so that when you're going to play, you're not going to have a hard time finding a cable, lending a cable from somebody else. <clears throat> I never did that, of course. <laughs> I'm Tina Jekyll from Berlin, I'm a jazz guitar player and today I'd like to share with you five tips that you can use if you want to go on to a jazz jam session. So if you know me from my Insta story, you know already I'm going to a lot of sessions and I've been going to sessions since I'm 20 years, so I have a lot of experience and I just like to share it with you. So first of all, go there, that's pretty obvious, but um, I think you don't have to immediately go on stage and play if you don't want to. Of course you can do it, but if you're afraid or if you're anxious, maybe it's a good thing just to go there, check out the place, who's the host, who's the person you're going to talk to if you want to play. If there is a host, some, but sometimes you just go on stage, maybe you recognize some of the faces and the players if you're going more often there and maybe you also recognize some of the tunes because most of the times there are some tunes in the mix in whatever city or uh, country you're playing in or going to a session that will be repeatedly played and if you uh, don't if you don't know any of the tunes then maybe you can ask a musician or somebody you're sitting next to who knows if he or she knows the tune and make a mental note or really a note and write that tune down go home and learn it and then you have something you can play the next time you go to a session so number two if you're actually going to play, it's good to know most of the time the people who are joining in on the session, who are not from the uh, band that has been opening up the evening, but who are like guests who are joining the sessions, they can play two songs and afterwards normally there would be the next player. So if you get on stage with your guitar or any other instrument, you know you can play two songs, but then you're going to go off stage and I would recommend to to just do that even if there might be not another player in the beginning when nobody knows you because it's just a decent thing to do plus don't play like 100 choruses of a blues so I would say um, one or two choruses maybe three or four depending on the tempo and the tune but so don't overstretch or overstay your welcome and if you're not too nervous maybe you have a look how many players are on stage, are there maybe six, six saxophone players who have already been playing for a very long time. So maybe you play just one or two choruses and that's it. So that's what I do at least because I think, I, I try to think about the music and for example if there's a singer on stage, I wouldn't play like five choruses over a tune. I would play one maybe or if it's a ballad maybe only an a part so that maybe you can still think about the whole tune as being a piece of music i know sometimes on sessions that's not exactly what is happening nevertheless it doesn't keep you or me from doing it <laughs> tip number three is have your things together have your guitar in tune have a tuner have a cable have maybe some extra strings so that when you're going to play, you're not going to have a hard time finding a cable, lending a cable from somebody else. <clears throat> I never did that, of course. <laughs> so that you just go on stage and just can concentrate on playing. Number four should actually go without saying, I still say it because I think it's so important, is be nice to everybody. <laughs> So be nice to everybody. It doesn't matter if it's Charlie Parker. I mean, he's dead, I know, but you know what I mean? If it's a very good player or if it's somebody who actually doesn't know where the blues form ends, I think that's a courtesy everybody should really think about because it doesn't matter how good somebody is playing. It doesn't say if he or she is a good person. So, and uh, sometimes it's maybe easy to uh, fall in a habit of being maybe arrogant because you might see other people acting like this. Uh, <clears throat> and I think don't use them as a role model. You can be nice, you have your things together, 
you focus on your own thing and uh, that's it. Number five is more like a tip for the girls, but maybe it's a tip for the boys too. I don't know. It helps me a lot. It's know your way home because some of the sessions are really, really late. They stop like, don't know, after midnight, hours after midnight. And then there's the question, how can you get home? And I know for sure this was a thing that would block me to go out since I could not always afford a taxi to go home. I mean, that's the best thing. Take a cab home if you can afford it. But just like, you know, I'm making a photo of the schedule of the buses so I know exactly when the next bus is leaving. So I can hang around maybe 20 minutes longer in the club instead of hanging around the bus stop 20 minutes and freezing. So that's my last tip and I hope I could help you. Let me know what you think about it. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.